Hello everyone, my name is Chris and I would like to welcome you to Spiel Archivet. You're probably wondering what Spiel Archive is all about, what the funny name is all about, and what the channel is all about. The uh, Spiel Archivet, which translates to Game Archive, is actually a channel that started several years ago as a means for me to keep track of games and what they how they are built uh, how the user menus work the, uh, the user interfaces the controls and all that and it's not particularly um, or a, um, vi a couple of videos that relate to uh, how to play the, the game the best way or it's not they are not reviews either and they started off as a purely Swedish uh, for the for the Swedish audience and this will be the first video I create uh, in English so hopefully you will bear with me and um, my English is a bit rusty so we'll see how it goes today's video will be about XCOM and Enemy Unknown which is a turn-based strategy game made by a um, a company called Fear Axis Games or Fire Axis Games. I'm not sure how to pronounce pronounce their their name, but and it's built on a, an older franchise which dates back to the to the uh, early PC age and um, Commodore Amiga. And if you have played any of those older games, you will certainly recognize. Um, a lot of aspects and um, how you handle things in this in, in this newer version. So today I will go through uh, a bit of the uh, menus, the controls, the uh, and generally how you play the game, including combat. I will also take a look at the user interface and the different classes there are four of them the assault class heavy support snipe and sniper and also a part of the game is building your sort of home base and i'll take a look at that too so if we start off with the um the main start page you have the uh, options to start a single player game a multiplayer game which i haven't tried you can load a game like so um, you have different options and if you click any of the tabs or icons uh, up above there is nothing strange pretty straightforward what you can uh, the different settings and um, exit to desktop now I will warn you that there might be uh, some minor spoilers so if you haven't played the game or if you're interested in trying the game you might consider not watching everything, but I will try to keep the spoilers to a minimum. So anyway, we will go ahead and start a single play game. And you start off by selecting a difficulty, easy, normal, classic and impossible. The only one that I've completed so far is the normal difficulty. And you also have access to different or two advanced options if you want to have tutorials enabled and this Iron Man setting which i'm not entirely sure of what it does it says that you play with a single save oh okay mm, try to complete the game with one save perhaps well anyway we'll start the game in normal mode and i will return as fast as the uh, game is low okay it w that was quick so there are at times different uh, movie clips in between rendered scenes so I will just skip this one and the first thing you have to do is that you want to set a base location and you have any of the five continents to choose from and they give you different bonuses different perks for example if you place your home base in uh, North America you have access to air and space sort of bonuses which will 
um, reduce the cost of a weapon aircraft, uh, aircraft weapon costs by 50. In Europe you have export knowledge. In Asia you get combat, future combat. In South America we have ways. And in Africa you have all in which basically reduces the month funding or increases the uh, funding by 30% each month. You confirm whichever We're continent you want. Just inside the Egyptian border. Before each mission and the game just jumps into the uh, action right away. So you get a briefing of, of the operation you're about to commence. Then you launch the mission and a small clip per video Strike one. This is central. and you that's it so all hostile contacts in the AO don't take any chances okay so anyway um, if we look at the uh, user interface to start off with we it's pretty pretty clean you have quick access buttons or you can navigate through the uh, different icons that are placed uh, around the user interface so we can start off at the left, you have the uh, name of the soldier in question, his rank. You can end the turn, uh, look at the soldier's info, and this is basically his name, um, his health, will, offense and defense. You can go through the different soldiers by either pressing tab or left shift. So if you ta tab, you will go to the next soldier, and so on. Below here you have um, the different actions that any soldier can perform. So at the beginning of the game the actions are very limited. So all of them only have access to three different actions. Basically it's the uh, fire, um, fire command or fire action and that gets lit up or available. It gets available when you have enemies in sight. The overwatch command the, with, with the overwatch command you tell the soldier to stand fast and uh, to keep an outlook for enemies and if any of them enter your sort of viewing area you will try to engage it. So you get a sort of bonus attack that, that particular round. You also have frag grenades and if you try to act activate or throw one of these, they have a limited range and also a limited blasting range. So if you basically anything within the blasting range will be affected. So I'll try and throw one of them so you can see what happens. Now, as I did this, this set the uh, this taxi on fire. So not this round but the next uh, round this uh, taxi will explode so you have to keep that in mind continuing on we have a weapon switch function also and I ne rarely very rarely use the um, s second weapon I always use the primary one if you look at the different soldiers they have these weird icons and the first set of sort of dashes or boxes, that's the, the uh, soldier's current health. The second bar is the player's sort of mental state. Um, because at times you can get panicked and uh, this one will change into a sort of panic stage. It just, it just displays the, I don't know, heart rate, I guess. And below that, if you look at the... Um, the two um, well, icons or whatever, uh, arrows, that's the number of actions each soldier can perform in this particular round. So if you look at the, um, uh, at the environment, you have this blue sort of ring or area, limited area, which you can uh, go in. Uh, that's the um, furthest you can walk or run in one action. 
but you can use the second action and dash further and that's the orange sort of area which shows uh, basically how, how, how far you can run using both actions but you can also combine these so if you still stay within the um, the first action ring the blue one I will show you how this works so you can see this sort of pylon that I have showing uh, underneath the mouse just as you hover at the edge it's it's clear but, uh, or light blue and if you move outside it says it says dashing and that's that's the uh, limit between the two the two actions so I will walk or run perform the first action and you do that by pressing the right button now I have access to my second actions and uh, as you, uh, you can see the the first one disappeared I only have one left now I can either continue my movement or I can perform one of the actions so I can put this guy in overwatch can get additional information if you need okay that's the player information so overwatch fire on the first enemy that moves within your line of sight at a small aim penalty okay so I'll do that and this is more or less how the game works you uh, go through all your different soldiers you plan your tactics because this is turn-based so when you have finished off all your actions um, with all your soldiers the enemy will make their moves and at times their moves are just hidden you can't see anything I'll show you how that works I'll just move the uh, last one I can dash him over him we'll see if we will encounter an enemy okay I did so if I have enemies within a visible range their actions, uh, or the, these particular actions, will be be shown. Otherwise, it, it will just say alien activity, and you will start all over again on your next turn. Okay, pretty stupid move, um, I guess. But also, one other thing I would like to show you is okay, there's the taxi exploding. One other thing is that wherever you place your mouse or this is sort of piling you get a defi defense icon and this is the amount of sort of defense you get from the environment if you're you're hiding behind cars or behind the walls or whatever so if you look behind the car you get half uh, half of the um, sort of shield icon and if you would hide behind the wall you get a full shield icon I'm not entirely sure to what degree this uh, affects the game but I think it has to do with the amount of damage that you uh, will take so if they if the enemy does hit you will probably get reduced damage or perhaps a non-critical damage also in the user interface you will see um, that the um, two enemies now are visible so I will try to engage in combat I will perform my first move like this just move up a, a bit okay we'll have more enemies this is a bad situation for my part but anyway so now I have four um, aliens that I have to take account take into account so now I'm in within range and I will try the fire command also a new one appeared here, the hunker down, which basically tells the soldier to hunker down and give uh, extra bonuses to to to, um, to to defense, I guess. And it, it, and it ma makes the uh, soldier also immune to critical hits. I will try to fire and as I guess almo almost all games work, there is a sort of open or a hidden game mechanic where a percentage you have to reach a certain percent percentage or within a certain percentage or range uh, to get a hit and in this case it's it says so so the uh, 
the chance for me to hit right now is 57%. I will do up to 4 damage, and this is not always the case. You sometimes make 2 damage, and it will cost this much am ammunition. Right, so, I guess I'll um, chance it. Um, most of the time, if you have lower than 55-60%, you, you probably are better off trying to hide somewhere or hunker down or put your put your character in overwatch but anyway uh, just for demonstration purposes I will try to um, take my shot and at, at this um, this soldier has three aliens within his viewing range and I can tab through uh, the different ones or click them in the user interface and the the one with the highest um, hit chance is probably your best bet. So I'll try to attack that one. And I did hit. It was a bad hit, so I only got two, uh, only made two damage. And obviously, the the problem for me right now is that um, I don't have any other enemies within range for, for my other soldiers, so I'll try to move as close as I can. And one of them appeared within range. And again, I can do uh, whichever action I think is appropriate. So I'll just try for demonstration sakes again to try to hit this little fella. Got him. Okay, so he, he died. It was a good hit. Destruct when the operator dies. We should look closely for any fragments that could be salvaged for our own development program. Yeah, the uh, annoying scientist lady. Um, at times she come uh, and tries to give you smart advice, but I find her very irritating. So anyway, um, as you progress within the game, you get, you get access. Um, each soldier have their own sort of talent tree, ability tree, uh, which you can expand, add to, and you will get access to uh, more elaborate attacks and uh, later on psi abilities and things like that. You will also do some research to get access to, to more efficient weapons, um, armor and things like that, and I will get to that uh, next. So I will cut, cut off right here and I will return when I'm at my base. And the problem is that this is a previous save that I did a couple weeks ago and there might be some minor spoilers here so I'm just warning you guys to keep this in mind. Okay, uh, I'll see you at my home base. Well, okay. Hopefully it will work this time. Um, I did a previous attempt and why uh, if you press the pause button with which I have uh, um, bound to uh, the, uh, my, my fraps program, the whole thing froze. So hopefully it will, will work this time. So anyway, welcome back to my uh, my home base and um, I really like this neat view you have of your home base, um, which allows you to scroll around the different areas that you have set up, and the uh, user interface is a bit different. I also forgot to mention that within the game you have uh, access to the in-game uh, menus by pressing escape, and will you will have the basic uh, options of uh, returning to the game, saving the game, loading, um, gaining access to the options or changing the difficulty if you uh, if you want access to a uh, XCOM database also uh, exit to the main menu and quit to the desktop so anyway uh, the user interface is also uh, a bit different as I mentioned you have um, these icons at, at the top or the uh, tabs if you will which takes you to the different areas within your page uh, your base you also have a um, notification if you will about uh, the number of credits you have and the uh, 
monthly income which is um, right now a plus of 143 in my case so I'll just go through all of these you can you can if you want scroll to the different areas let's see research is down here and, and, and click it is this research no okay should be your okay here it is or you can click the icon above here or the text so this is the uh, research facility and this one the, uh, the 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 uh, in the lower right corner you have the current research that you're doing and uh, the amount of time it will take you can change this or start a new research project over here and this will gi uh, give a, a new menu where you can uh, begin different kinds of projects and these are based upon things that you collect from from the different missions or salvage from the uh, different um, missions so they will progress into allowing you to build different weapons and uh, new technology armor and all, all, all kinds of stuff you also have access to research archives which is basically things that you have reach researched in the past and that are completed you can review the research credits i'm not sure what this is all about also in the lower parts here you you, you see that i have access to 24 scientists at the moment and this will increase eventually um, as you progress within within the game so i can leave the the research facility by clicking the um, either the escape button or the um, arrow left arrow in the lower left corner so the in in engineering things that you research will probably most likely end up as an sort of item that you can engineer and the, uh, the layout of layout is almost the same here you have number of engineers current projects and two two um, two tabs two menus that you can access one is building different items different armor and different vehicles and items are things like weapons um, it could be things like this vest over here med kits arc throwers which will allow you to uh, capture uh, um, capture um, aliens which then can be autopsied or in a sort of a, um, interrogated in, in, in the research facility you also can build armor and you have to keep this in mind that the uh, vests they take up an, one of the um, I think it's the uh, additional item slots where you can have things like uh, a med kit device you can have um, you can have grenades and also a vest but if you research or build armor these will go into the armor slot so the armor are of course better to to build vehicles are satellites which are needed uh, I will show you this uh, in a couple of uh, later on um, you also can build your vehicle upgrades which can be cannons things like uplink link targeting and uh, these are used when engaging ufos but it, this i found it found that this rarely happens later on you will only also get access to building new kinds of uh, vehicles in the barracks this is where you access all your soldiers so you can view the soldiers <coughs> which is a list of your active soldiers and the wounded ones you can also access a particular soldier and look at the this guy's um, stat stats like his name um, what kind of health he has the will and all that and also access the abilities and these this is the ability tree that I mentioned also his loadouts so as, as you can see down here the uh, nanofiber vest go into the uh, um, 
the lower slot, when, which I guess is the uh, item slot or additional slot. We can change this to um, so he wear uh, so he carries grenades instead. The uh, secondary weapon, the main weapon, and the armor slot. So I have access to a car carapace, carapace, carapace and armor. Um, so I can change this to one of those. And he will immediately ship. have a better to be both and uh, defense value. Anything we've used in the past. So let's see here. Okay, defense didn't go up. Is it the health? A plus four. A plus one. Okay, so the health is increased. You can customize each character if you want. I didn't bother. I also played through the whole game in a normal mode, so I never changed any names or things like that. But you can, if you yes, want, command. change the look of the character and the skin um, and all that. If, if, if you like to do this. And you can also dismiss each soldier, which basically fires him. Hit, you, you, you take him off your payroll, so to speak. You can also see the uh, different abilities that this particular soldier have access to while in combat. So you have a fire rocket command, which is really good. Um, Holo targeting, never used that one. Shredder rocket, danger zone, and so on. In the officer training school, you have access to different sort of upgrades to which affects all soldiers. So your squad size, if you purchase this one, you, your squad size is increased to five soldiers. I think there's one that will increase to six also. Okay, this one. And um, so on, different overall upgrades uh, regarding the soldiers. And you can also view the, the memorial, which is basically the, a list of soldiers that you have lost in combat. and. This just states the number of kills, the number of missions they did, uh, their last operation, and the date they died. Oh, okay, I missed one. Hire soldiers is, is where you go if you want to hire additional soldiers. And the barracks capacity is 99, so you have to keep that in mind. But I rarely used more than, uh, I don't know, like 20, 25 soldiers at any time. So in the hangar you have access to a, a ship list or the, a list of all your available ships and you can access each each uh, first of all you have five different continents which you have to sort of protect so you can transfer from here you can arrange uh, to have our different or the available the ships By into another continent so if I want to transfer we'll that particular ship to South America if I feel a need for it I can just perform that um, action right here and it says that it's in transit it will take three days for it to arrive I can also access each um, each ship, and here I can get some weapon information of the current uh, weapon that it has. Ship information. I can edit the loadout if I have additional uh, missiles, weapons, cannons, and all that. And I can also dismiss the ship. Also, the ready status says that the uh, the ship is available for for uh, formations for combat or engagements uh, and if it's damaged uh, it will s state to you the um, amount of days it will take for it to repair lastly we have the situation room which is a big uh, um, sort of overview of the um, uh, of the earth and the different countries and the diff five different continents and your sort of aim is to have one satellite above, um, hovering ab above each country. That will allow you to find UFO targets that are in, in within the vicinity and then engage them. So if you have additional satellites available and you have uplinks, one uplink is required per satellite then you can launch a sat satellite into whichever country you feel um, 
they need to. And you also see that the different the countries give you different bonuses and different perks. So in the case of Europe, I have two set satellites up. So this will give me plus three scientists per month. If I launch another satellite, uh, I will gain access to six scientists per month and so on. And if I fill the, uh, the whole continent, I get a bonus. You will have to excuse the uh, sudden interruption because uh, Fraps was trying to um, record or save the video onto my hard drive and the hard drive was full. So I probably missed um, about four minutes of video which I now have to recreate. So anyway, I was talking to you about the um, um, when you launch the satellite and the different bonuses that you receive, um, which in this case will give you a expert knowledge and uh, in Asia, it will give you future combat if you fill all of the, um, the if I think it's the four countries with satellites. So anyway, continuing on, we have an this overview of the XCOM finances, the monthly the expenditures and state. incomes. So you can keep track of this. Also, you have a section which is called the gray market where you can sell um, abundant, if you will, things that you have in storage. But I found, found that you, you'd better keep a, um, keep a hold on these. You better keep these because they are needed in uh, research and while building things. At, at times uh, when you play, you will recover different items that are damaged and those you can go on and sell because they have no value for you. The uh, last section here is called the pending requests and this happens during the game where different countries send you a request for items like alien, um, um, I don't know, it, it could be alien materials or weapons or different things that they, they that they want and in return you will uh, be given um, one of three things I think it was engineers scientists or uh, or cash um, credits that you can spend and um, or a, any combination I guess of those three I just realized that I missed a section under engineering uh, where you build the different facilities and I will get to that in just a few moments. I'll just continue explaining the user interface and we uh, at the lower right corner we have upcoming events which can be um, different research that you're, uh, that you're performing and uh, things that engineering is building and things like ship transfers and all sorts of things. At the end of each month you also have a council report where you will be graded on your performance an A to an F I guess it is and um, you will also receive your monthly credits your monthly researchers and engineers if any and you will be able to oh well, I, I think that's that's it so um, at the bottom here you have your current time and your date and the mission control button when you, or if you're clicking this area up here you'll be able to progress the game um, by clicking the scan for activity button. You also have this sort of globe icon down here and this indicates the different threats, threat levels. I, I assume it is that, that what it does. And um, that's about it, I guess. If you scan for activity, it will progress and you can also stop it. At times you will encounter uh, alien, a crashed alien or a UFO encounter or things like that. So a anyway, the, the section that I missed was the um, where you actually build the facilities. And you can either remove one of the current ones that you have and you or you can build new fa 
facilities in areas that you have already excavated. Some are w with, uh, not within reach, so you have to, in this case, you have to build an uh, additional access lift and then you will access to this one. To reach these ones, you have to um, um, first excavate this area, um, like this, and uh, there are like s s sort of steam vents or steam areas. So if you want to build something new, you just choose an excavated area or excavated square like this one, build facility. <coughs> Excuse me. And they all come with different requirements. And in this case, if you want to build a laboratory, which will um, increase your research speed by 20%, you need to have three power available. You need to have six scientists available and 62 uh, credits. Some like the thermal generator only require credits, but they do require these steam squares. So we have to build one on top of, of, of one of them. And you can build additional uplinks, you can build additional sort of um, areas uh, which we which you later get gain access to like the foundry where you can develop new combat items um, like the satellite nexus which is a sort of uplink but w uh, that allows you to um, receive transmission from four satellites instead of the ordinary two you have the workshop and you will have more uh, things to build later on So that's about it regarding XCOM. I just wanted to end the video by saying that I found the uh, game to be pretty good. I enjoyed the um, turn-based uh, mechanism that is built, um, implemented into the game. And um, for you guys who, who, who remember the original PC versions or the Amiga versions, you will find that there are a lot of similarities to those games and uh, regarding you know how the way the way you build your base and um, the way you uh, do com uh, do combat and um, the way you travel around the world and things like that and soldiers and armor and all that stuff i did however have some a few issues with with, with um xcom and um, it was hard to tell, uh, for example, the abilities that you uh, select, which one would actually be of any use. I did select some abilities that in combat later on uh, I never actually used and uh, should have made different choices. But on all the other soldiers uh, afterwards, I of course did the correct um, the correct choice but in the beginning it was it, it was a bit a bit confusing also I found at times that when that I was that I was playing um, the uh, the enemies seemed a bit overpowered um, they almost never missed and they uh, also had um, a much better movement so f for example while I can move like I don't know 10 tiles or 10 steps um, in, in my first first action um, some, of, some of the enemies could move like 20 steps and then perform a, an additional a action like shooting at me in so I'm not sure if this is, um, is an, a balance question or if it's supposed to be like this but at times I felt that the enemies were way better than me and this was even after I got better, had better equipment and all that, uh, because they scaled uh, or sort of added new enemies all the time, um, which were harder to kill, harder to confront. So anyway, this was uh, the video for XCOM Enemy Unknown. Uh, my name is Chris. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video, my first video in English in regards of Spiel. Archivet, um, and there will be more to come, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching.